Hi everyone, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. And my name is Coco. Gem Holiday. Coco, how are you? Um, I'm doing okay. I have a handle of vodka. Um, there's also a fan blaring in the background. Um, so if you can hear that, I'm sorry, but the production value needs to suffer for my art. <laughs> <laughs> it does, because our top level of our house is um, like Satan sat his ass crack on our home. Yeah, seriously. We're right in between those cheeks. I can smell the dookie, <laughs> and I'm already burning alive with his red hot cheeks around my face. Yes, yes. Um, speaking of Satan, uh, Donald <laughs> Trump is president, yeah. and, um, <laughs> Gosh, that's and so true. the world is. Uh, I wouldn't say falling apart. I'd say we're experiencing a renaissance, a revolution of sorts. Yeah, definitely. We are experiencing a revolution of sorts, aren't we? Mm-hmm. We are. The world is, like, the, is changing so drastically. There has been countless marches for like over a week straight. This is probably... You know, I bet in Guinness Book of World Records, I bet like marches... Even after Martin Luther King Jr. died, um, I think the marches only lasted like five days yeah and this has gone over five yeah yeah it's um it's surreal it's a very strange time to be living in uh we have been uh at the protests and we have seen uh the crowds that have been drawn and the amount of people that are showing up or showing out and it's uh sitting back seeing the amount of people that are at these protests it is awe-inspiring it's something i've never really seen before yeah, it's it's kind of changing the way that I think about the world. It's it's changed. It's making me feel like we're actually people are actually listening finally. Yeah, just just insane. Yeah. Um, it, and one thing too, like it, so much happened so quickly. So like obviously twenty twenty is crap, and we can all agree to that. Like murder hornets towards you know COVID towards. Um, three black individuals dying this year from really horrible circumstances. And, like, and obviously, as a society, we have to keep moving forward. We do. And it does feel like a revolution, because I think there's a build-up, too. Since people were trapped inside, and then this happened right as restrictions were lifting, Mm -hmm. like, you just gave people a reason to leave their home yes. to go on a much-needed walk. <laughs> um, one uh, much greater than needing a haircut, by the way, Karen. Yeah, come on, Karen. Your hair didn't look good before, it doesn't look good after. Exactly. Gosh. <laughs> it was so killing me. Everybody on my Facebook like, I just really need a haircut. I'm like, okay, just cut yourself, or just whatever. I don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like... This is a reason to be fired up. This is a reason to really want to push change in this country. And it really does. I don't know. I have, I've never really felt this way. I'm always, I'm always one of those people, too, that used to say, Oh, you know what? It would have been so cool to like, be part of like, you know, like, the protests in like, the 60s about like, uh, the war you know, um, in Vietnam and all that stuff and be oh, one of those hippies because I've always kind of had like a, a hippie spirit despite being a little bit angry and aggressive at times. Um, <laughs> I don't deny these things. Yeah, you. like I'm an angry hippie. <laughs> so like, it, you know, they kind of contradict themselves but it makes sense, I guess, all at the same time. Um, but yeah, no. Um, it's, it's, it comes from a place of love and being a- alive in this time when we get to express that love and show that solidarity and support is something that I have wanted for our country because there always have been these issues. It's like, like you said, now people are listening and now people are waking up to them. Yeah. And so today, um, specifically, we're going to be talking about these issues in a way that we haven't done yet on this podcast. Yeah, we are actually going to be interviewing a queen uh, that has some roots here in the Portland area. So we are going to be interviewing uh, the one, the only, Kimber K. Shade. Yeah. Yeah. So, Donna, I forgot to ask, how are you doing tonight? You know what, Coco? I will let you know after this brief commercial break. Hey there. I'm Aaron Holman, host of Eye to Eye, a weekly podcast talk show all about passion. I have this passion and this fire within me that burns brighter than the fire around me. Hello. With performing, there's always a story to tell, whether it's my own or not. Creativity. I go, he's more than cute. He's creative. All with an LGBT twist. 
make sure to check out Eye to Eye. That's E-Y-E, number two, letter I. And rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in today. It's a podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. Tune into what they tell you podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. You know what, Coco? I'm pretty glad because despite the turmoil we have going on in the world, we have a special guest tonight. We have Kimber Shade. Hi, Kimber. How are you? Hi. <laughs> so, Kimber, we just learned while we were having our pre-screening here that your full drag name is Kimber K. Shade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what we, does the K stand for? Do you want to know what the K stands for? Yes. yes. Cunt. Cunt with a K. I love it. Cunt with a K, honey, the cool one. Yes. Um, so we're gonna so just for our listeners and your fans and followers, we're gonna ask you a couple of questions about your history. Um, so let's start off with please give us a brief history of you as a drag artist for you know our fans and your fans and everybody's listeners. Okay. So it all started in 2010. The Portland drag scene was dry, and then I showed up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love that. So, um, I don't know if you guys know Kimberly Westwood. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was yeah. an empress, one of the best empresses. Uh, she was even voted empress of the decade. Um, she came to me about 10 years ago, and she was on a softball team, and they had to have a fundraiser at CC's. And she was like, girl, we got to get in drag, and we got to do this. And I was like, uh, but if we do drag... We'll never get boyfriends. We'll never be cool. Because at that time, like, there was only, like, a certain type of drag queen. And they weren't, like, this is pre-RuPaul's Drag Race. This Mm -hmm. is pre-YouTube. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah. I I had a lot of, like, insecurities about that. But it was the Lady Gaga time. I was a little monster. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I felt it. So she convinced me. We learned the telephone dance with Beyonce and Lady Gaga. I saw that video. Yeah. Girl, let me tell you, girl. Let me tell you, girl. (laughs) We got backup dancers. And at the time, nobody was giving backup dancers. Nobody was giving choreography. It wasn't being done. People Mm -hmm. were walking around back and forth, hitting their three points, not breaking the third wall, all of that. Yeah. (laughs) So then enter these two twinks who have been, like, we had just turned 21 in... Uh, uh, at the time his name was Boom Boom Mm -hmm. uh, turned 21 in January and I turned 21 in February so we became really close friends because um, we were the only 21 year olds at the time so then fast forward to April he's like let's get in drag Lady Gaga telephone came out and they hadn't put a video out yet so I was Mm -hmm. like let's do it and this is right when YouTube was getting pretty hot Um, so we practiced 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 we did the performance and We shut it down. Now, let me say this. Being a drag queen for 10 years, I look at that video and I cringe. (laughs) And I'm like, girl, Mm -hmm. you couldn't even five, six, seven, eight. I was all off. I didn't even look at nobody. (laughs) I know how to like fling my hair and look cute. Oh my God, it's a mess. But that video got, I think it's like 400 and something thousand views. Damn. That's what started, in my opinion, the breath of the new generation of Portland. Yeah, We had wow. had Queen, Jinx Monsoon is from here, but she also faced bullying and she faced a lot of hard times here. And so she left and didn't even claim Portland. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. So I believe that video kind of made it okay in a way for boys like me who were feminine, mm-hmm. known, to be a drag queen and to really express themselves in the way that they wanted to. So me and Kim Chi at the time, now she's Kimberly Westwood, mm-hmm. um, we're drag queens. And then after us popped up all of the new scene. Um, yeah. it, and if you notice, there's, there's an age gap. So there's me and Kimberly Westwood, and then there's nobody really in between us and the 40-year-olds. And that's because of the, of, 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 it wasn't cool to be a drag queen. Yeah. So that was the story then. That was 10 years ago. Over the time, I put in a lot of work. For me, I I like to, I'm positive about everything that I do, right? So I think about the the silver lining, but I'm not going to lie. It was hard um, growing up as a drag queen in Portland and being black because there's only 
a certain amount of jobs for a black girl here and we have a certain amount of black girls here right mm -hmm. so being the new girl coming in um i faced a lot of hatred it's also because we did break through like we did something that the other girls weren't able to we we went viral and nobody else did that around here so you got to think about that animosity going into the bar too and then if you know me and kimberly westwood we don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks yeah so you put that in passive portland and then it's like yeah i saw that video and it was a fabulous debut so yeah thank you so much <laughs> yeah had, i mean i've had even crazier times adore delano came here um during gay pride one time and i climbed on stage and made out with her uh in drag mm. um yeah it was <laughs> it was a whole moment like she she actually pulled us up on stage which we couldn't believe because it was like a thousand people there she pulled us up on stage and my friend was like what do we do i was like we fucking dance like hello like, you and then it's like it's a part in the song where she pulls somebody else up and she makes out with them and being kimber cunt like i am <laughs> I walked up and pushed the guy that she was making out with and I kai kai with her on stage. Nice. <laughs> you got to get it done, honey. Don't let nobody stop you from your dream. Okay? I dig that. I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. So then fast forward, my drag daughter Flawless came onto the scene. And for me, as a drag mother, I, I like to be a producer and I like to give. That's who I am. So it's not about being on stage for me, but if I can spark that in somebody else and I can make them kind of be the vessel and speak what I want, not what I want, but like speak and speak for themselves. I love that more than me being on stage. So mm -hmm. um, Flawless Shade, she walked in, I was hosting at Silverado's for um, Halloween and she walked in and you know Flawless, she's very, very tall and she had on a shake and go blonde wig that was all wet. And it might have been wet, but it looked like all wet. wet. <laughs> right. she, um, she was with her friend and I had a costume contest and I was like get up here and her and her friend uh, we call them banshee queens mm -hmm. do y'all know what that is yeah, the yeah. girls, mm -hmm. love yeah. The girls. I'm a <laughs> um, so they got up there and they acted like they owned the room they did not win the costume contest <laughs> but afterwards I went up to Flawless and I was like whatever you need if you're, if you're serious about this whatever you need I will give it to you Mm -hmm. That night, mm -hmm. I got off of work at like 2.30 in the morning. That night, I went over to Flawless's house, and I painted her face, and I, sh and I gave her half of my makeup, and I said, I know yeah. that you're going to mm -hmm. be somebody amazing. If you put the energy and the effort into this, you're going to be somebody amazing. I, I gave her the tools. She put in the work. Flawless mm -hmm. did not stop until mm -hmm. she became the best at what she does, and I had a part in that. You yeah. know what I mean? So that means more to me than me doing it and me being on the stage because that to me sometimes is selfish but when i can look and say i help that girl do it that makes me feel really ri like i'm here and i have a legacy you yeah. know dang you um, are your own legacy don't don't even yeah. sell yourself short and the sad thing is and let me just admit this for our listeners i met kimber um i met kimber because uh of some BS racist crap that was happening in the community. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was just this person named Kimber who showed up being vocal and correct and being honest and whatever. And that's the first time I talked to Kimber. Now I met Kimber when Flawless was gonna adopt a drag baby at a Flawless's show called Legacy. Mm -hmm. um, and then like I passed this person who just looks stunning and I was like, oh, I was like, you must be Flawless's drag mama. She's like, yeah, girl. And she like flipped her hair at me. I'm like, who is this girl? <laughs> I was like, outside of the fact that she's stunning. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm too intimidated to talk to her. I was like, I will meet her later. <laughs> well, ditto, because... I, the only thing that I knew about you is you was on Camp Wanakiki. And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't even know about Camp Wanakiki. They didn't call me, girl. But, <laughs> um, but then, you know, you, have you again, you have this presence. And I think, Donatella, you were there that night as well. I don't mm -hmm. know if you were a special guest or whatever. Yeah. I love, 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 love drag. And I'm that banshee girl that's in the back using my siren to scream for you girls and i love the fact that you guys are so powerful you came in and you had a viewpoint and i still remember your first performances there at legacy so mm -hmm. big thank ups you. to you all thank yeah. you yeah thank you so let me ask my second question it's just real quick like let's mm -hmm. do what venues do you support the most or like performing in yeah past and present yeah um i i really enjoy 
any venues that support me. So I'm, I'm a creative thinker. I've always been a creative problem solver. Um, I've won awards for that, um, national awards. And mm. so any bar that can come to me with a problem and say, solve it, I'll do it. So one of my favorite bars ever, 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 always, always, always will be Silverado's. Um, the reason being is because during my sweetheart year, I went into them and I was like, I want to win. And so I'm the sweetheart 27. And when I put my name in for the application, I almost didn't even make it through. Mm -hmm. Nobody believed in me and it came down to one vote. Um, and I had never done a pageant before and people just didn't think that I was capable of raising money. Um, and of course, I came through and swept the asses. But that's beside <laughs> the point. That's beside the point. Um, if I'm ever in something bad on her, I will always tell you that, or else you're gonna lose your money. Um, when I was a sweetheart, they were the only bar to like really like take the the manager came aside and was like, "Okay, I see that you're running. If you come in here every night, I will support you. And then if during your year, if you'll just like have an event here, I'll I'll just like I'll support you." And Dang. that was the only. It wasn't the only venue because i did have some contacts at cc like bolivia um but it wasn't like bolivia is an entity inside of cc's it wasn't cc's itself right sure. silverado's mm -hmm. itself said kimber is our queen and mm. it takes a lot for a bar to stake a black girl and they did it yeah um and i won and then so after i won um i had kimber's power hour it, it might sound familiar to you. Um, <laughs> it was a Friday party that happened from 9 until 11. And it was kind of like um, a pre-funk to everything that was going on. I wanted people to come to my show. The Queens did one number. It was their power number. No ballads. <laughs> okay. No ballads. And they showed out and then they got to take their friends and their crowd to whatever bar that they wanted to go. So it was my way of like, not only raising money for the community, but bringing the community back together because everybody thinks we're clicks mm -hmm. and then dispersing them ab about. So it was a really great moment. Um, That's a really good format for a show too. Just, yeah. I want to give so, you props there. <laughs> thank you. It lasted for 11 months. We raised a thousand dollars each show. So that was $11,000. Um, Silverado's also matched the door cover, which got donated. Cute. So that's also mm -hmm. like, they took care of me and they made sure that they um, made a statement with the sweethearts as well. So I just absolutely love that. And not only that, I was a sweetheart five years ago and I can walk in there and they still respect me as that person that, you know, was loyal. I have to put in there that this is a, around this time when I became the sweetheart was also when Stag opened and nobody was like really going to Silverado's anymore. Mm -hmm. So mm. to do an event, raise that much money, it was just, it was a powerful moment and, you know, loved it. So yeah. Silverados, love them. Um, of course, I love CC's because, I mean, that's just where drag ends and begins, right? In Portland. Mm -hmm. um, the former Embers, um, there were many times when I was so broke that I had to pay my light bill and I would go and beg the hostess to let me perform and they would be like, okay, but you got to do six numbers. Dang. And on my sixth number the audience there would be no audience and i would be like okay well can i just get my check and they would be like no we paid for six i've heard that i've heard that now, from, from everybody yeah, yeah. Dang, and performing. let me tell you this and let me tell you this my sixth number was and i'm telling you <laughs> and i let them fucking have it every <laughs> single <Damn>. time but <laughs> yeah. shout out to embers though because again even though they you know it wasn't always easy they still gave me the shot. So, mm -hmm. you know, we live in a new day and age. Portland has changed a lot in 10 years, right? So the things that the girls had to put up with 10 years ago, absolutely they wouldn't do now. But yeah, yeah. we had to do those things so that we could get here. Agreed. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So um, we're going to get into the um, hard hard and heavy hitting questions okay. um let's do a brief i love like, your heavy hitting questions coco you like to come at me girl yes sure do <laughs> bitch sure do left and right um so brief trigger warning for our listeners and our fans um we are going to be talking about heavy hitting subjects about race uh so be prepared for that but hopefully it'll be educational if you tune out now you are racist we've all decided um, it's decided <laughs> it's yes. decided it's law actually <laughs> it's law it's law right now hashtag black lives matter um so just a trigger warning for that. that Wait, really quick. Can we say his name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, George yeah. Floyd. Jo- yeah, well, I was like, George Floyd, yeah, George yeah. Floyd. I was like, yeah, of course we can say his name, girl. We can say whatever we want on the podcast. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's so really um, it is. So this first question, and actually, just for those of you who might be living in a box right now, um, George Floyd is a unarmed black man who was the victim of police brutality, and they eventually lost their life. There are two conflicting stories, but most stories end up with it being um, what happened to him um, led to the ending of his life, Mm -hmm. Uh, regardless if it was the knee on the back or complications from the knee on the back. So um, just let's be clear about that. And it has sparked nationwide outrage, protests, marches, everything. So uh, could you share your stories or experiences in Portland's drag community over the years? Has the scene mm. changed and has it become more diverse or less diverse? So, yeah, we, we kind of got into that a little bit earlier. I would definitely yeah. say it's become more diverse. Um, there's a lot more girls on the scene. There's a lot of different flavors. Um, you have East Side, West Side. You have mm-hmm. alternative glam. Um, before, it was just you're either glam or you're not accepted. <laughs> you, you were glam or you were not getting on the stage. Yeah. You... So, I mean, I don't know if you guys know me, but I look, I'm, I'm like, you know, that girl. And I would fight with every show host about wearing tights because I'm like, look at these fucking legs. Like, <laughs> you're not about to tell me to put on some goddamn tights. Like, and so I would get the, um, the new color fishnets mm-hmm. that doesn't mm-hmm. look like you have anything on. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. and they would be so hot. But I would pull it and be like, yep, see, it's right there. You can't <laughs> <laughs> um, and they would use and they would use words like well it's not professional mm. uh, you understand it's yeah. not professional what you're doing so we need you to do it this way and that doesn't fly in portland anymore um portland yeah. accepts any type of crazy kooky cacao you know looney tunes whatever you dream it portland's like hey let's put it on stage let's give them all a chance which also kind of has an adverse effect on you know the culture it but, does mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And no disrespect yeah. to anybody that wants to be a drag queen. We love you. But, you know, there's a place and a time. And there's people that are paying in the audience to see uh, t- uh, entertainment, right? So yeah. you got to, if you're not ready to entertain, which means you're going to break through the third wall. You're going to look people in the face. You're going to know your words. You're going to dance yeah. a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to have gowns, outfits. These are mm-hmm. things that it's not a, a hit. Like, you can have alternative drag. And wear garbage. Yeah. But it's got to be put together. You can wear right. garbage well. Yeah. Right. And I, and I literally, I don't mean like you, what you're wearing is garbage. I literally mean you can wear trash out of the garbage mm-hmm. and make it look good. Uh, exactly. Yeah. It's all about how you style things. It's about mm-hmm. your eye for fashion. And it's not mm-hmm. really even about having resources. It's about being smart with your drag. Um, right. Even, even if you don't have all of the money in the world to right. like, build up this big costume, right. you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, I'm a... Look at me. I got my background right here. I'm, I'm a crafty queen. I'll, I'll yeah. take some shit and make it. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I think that Portland is more, more accepting now. They're more like open. Now that we've seen queens like Who just Evie. Uh, Evie. Yeah. Oh, Evie. The, Evie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but well, now we're back to Glamour with um, Jada Essence Hall. But before that, we had Evie and then uh, Sharon Needles. All of those things. Portland has always been weird, but it wasn't okay. And then when you had those kind of icons that did it, mm-hmm. it made it like, okay, great. Now we're going to be more accepting of these kind of crazy queens. And that's when you had the resurgence of Blow Pony and the East Side events where it was like super, super different. Right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. So we've noticed you being very vocal online in regards to what happened with George Floyd. Um, mm-hmm. as we just mentioned him right before this segment. Um, what is driving you or pushing you to be so vocal? Do you feel like you're making a difference outside of the obvious goals? What are you hoping to accomplish on a local level? Um, I would say go back and check the record. I've been mm-hmm. this vocal for 10 years. Look at my Facebook. I've been saying things. I've been speaking out. I've been calling people out. I've been calling establishments out. Yeah. But, before two weeks ago before george floyd i was looked at as problematic now you're looking at me as a as the person who with the with the light and the voice mm-hmm. so you yeah, know I, really I, quickly actually it's funny how people keep talking about how um like you've become like such a community leader um 
And I'm like, because I have seen your posts, especially ever since everything happened, uh, you know, a few months ago between, you know, the, the I'm action. Yeah. yeah. And so like, and I'm like, oh yeah, but she's always been vocal, but it's interesting how the stuff that you're saying now, you're like, oh yeah, look at these new community leaders popping up. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and that's something, and that's something. But let's go back. What do they label me as? The loud black girl. Yeah, yeah, the angry black woman, the right, the, the person who speaks too had, loudly. Right, I've literally had people say, "I don't understand. I, I just don't even understand you because I just shut you off when you as soon as you get loud." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I just don't get that because we're at a drag show. Why are right. you not cheering? Yeah. Right. Why are you not screaming for your drag daughter who's on stage? That's what people can't take. I have mm-hmm. authenticity. My drag daughter's hitting the stage, and I'm gonna sc- out scream everybody, bitch. Yeah. Right. You mad? Right. That's my drag daughter, honey. Mm-hmm. Step up or step out. But even going on, in, even into the issues, I've had conversations lately with people, and they're like, the, you know, just the way that you communicate. So that's why I have specifically over the last couple of weeks in person with people, I try to take it down a notch because I understand that they do not get that. Right. They don't get that I'm from a different place. I'm from North New Jersey, honey, and we give it to you straight. Yeah. We, we punch you in the face with it, and then we keep it moving. You got a booger in your nose? I'm going to say you got a booger, and then I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna give you a tissue, and then I'm going to keep it moving. Yeah. Yes. It's so cool, but you got a booger in your nose. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And then, you know, the funny thing about this, too, is that the loudness and the vocalness um, that people have been talking about. Because I've even noticed now, like, so four days ago, mama would like everything I said on the internet, it's like viral share a thousand times. And then like, I made another little woke post just a few, like probably like earlier, a couple hours ago. And like, it didn't, it didn't have anywhere near as many likes or shares. And like, and I know that people are getting burnt out on hearing the message and having the conversations. And I'm starting to see it again, like, cause I'm an activist, you know, to where, you know, white folks felt like they've done enough kind of to a degree. <laughs> And I like, so they're starting to get like, you know, back into the routines. They're like, even though the marches are still cute, um, mm. I'm noticing the online stuff. People are starting mm. to like. Yeah. And let me just yeah. say, white folks, you've never done enough. You need to keep right. doing more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so honestly, like you were saying, that's why it wants me, it pushes me to do more. And so anytime that I see a message and excuse me if I haven't, Um, amplified your messages lately, Coco. But anytime I see a message that needs to be said, i.e. anything Courtney Capri Dove is saying, I try to um, also mirror that because it's really important that we speak as a unified voice. Um, Mm -hmm. They can't be hearing too many problems at once, right? So we all have to kind of like give it to them all. You know what I mean? Like yesterday we attacked the fact that none of the gay bars gave us any attention great now all of them have now what's our new thing and that's how we get to have change because we have to break it off in bits and pieces we can't just give the white people all of this problem because then they get too scared and defensive and oh it's not me and oh all cops are good but i don't don't want to hear that let's Mm -hmm. break it off into pieces okay becky today this is what you did great let's Mm -hmm. fix that tomorrow this is what we need you know what i mean and i think that that's how we accomplish the the bigger the, we solve the bigger problem, in my opinion. So Yeah, and I agree with that. And actually, to go apart with this whole, that same question, like, what are we hoping to accomplish, accomplish on a local level? I wanted to touch base on that, actually. We didn't actually speak about this before we started mm-hmm. recording. But that conversation about the bars and stuff like that, um, I had noticed, and I've noticed in every city I've performed in, there is a little bit of a tokenism, but it's more so drag show producers trying to be like, well, I do want to make sure I have people of color, like a plethora of diversity in my shows to give people yeah. and artists their opportunity. But what I've been noticing is about show producers here is it is first come first serve, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, people got to ask for the gigs and like they get booked out and whatever. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't see that favoritism, but I guess I'll go ahead and out myself here by saying I'd actually like to see a little bit more favoritism. Like, like, first come first serve is great especially if it's like first come first serve with people who've been doing it for a few years Mm -hmm. right but maybe reserve that spot you know like coco coco ask me why i don't do shows here um excuse me kimber k shade (laughs) why don't you do shows here yeah let me remind you this k stands for cunt (laughs) 
I don't do shows here because they don't appreciate my artwork, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been up to Seattle for the last five years. New Year's, 4th of July, Gay Pride, Halloween. They, they, they pay for my travel. They've given me hotel. They, they give me a very large paycheck. Mm -hmm. I host. They give me a free uh, drink tab. You know how much the bitch drinks? Um, yes, all she these does. Things, and I can't even get that in my home city. Yeah. yeah. What does that tell you? I w like you said, I would like to see some spots reserved for those girls who, who have something to say. I don't mm -hmm. always need to be on stage, and I don't always need to be, like, bucking and twirling. But when I have a number that I know is going to rock the party, let me in. Don't, right. don't say, well, girl, you haven't been here, and you haven't da 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 Check the resume. Because like I said, back in 2010, none of these bitches existed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I have to be real with you on that. And I have to be real when I say that. Like, I'm not trying to be entitled. I'm not trying to be any of that. But if it comes down to it, there is nobody, in my opinion, that does what I do, right? So I should be able to, to have that moment. But they keep picking the girls that are their friends or... The girls that they're like, they know, or I'm trying not to mention any names, or, <laughs> or the girls that do the drugs with them, or, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's not about talent. Make it yeah. about talent, and then let's see what happens. Right. And I know it's about, like, I, I agree. I agree with all of that. So what, what are some, like, so just real briefly, so what are some things you're hoping to accomplish on a local level? Okay, so I'm not just loud for no reason, right? So the other <laughs> night, right, the other night let, let's go back. So the other day, I was feeling, I had FOMO because I saw this digital drag fest happening. And I was like, I looked at the roster, and I was like, this isn't fair. Like, it's all of the Darcells girls and maybe like a couple other people that it yeah. always is. And I understand that they're reliable. They're capable. They're great. They got great fashions. They're talented. They're all of those things. But you mean to tell me that that is the story of Portland? That's mm. the old story of Portland. Because Bougie Cherry could outperform any of those. Yeah. Right. Bougie Cherry can get the crowd on their feet more than any of those people can. Right. You know right. what I mean? And she wasn't even asked. This isn't about me. This is about the girls who have talent and we're not even giving them the respect to offer them the job. Right. Yeah. So I created my own um, digital drag fest and this was kind of like before the movement started happening and then during the movement. So what do I want on a local level? I wanted more attention. I wanted more visibility. And I, I started creating this drag um, fest and I feel like I, I'm starting to get that now because people are seeing wh what they've been doing wrong. Right? right. They're seeing that, wow, like every time I ask Henry for a solution, he gives it to me and it's actually a really good one. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed the reformation in the ISRC, but that's because I've been having conversations with them and going behind and saying, wait, like... I think have people have noticed. Like people have yeah. noticed, and, and yeah, they're definitely talking about it, and I think you're doing some great things with that. And it's not only me, there's other people. Flawless, okay, so there's different people who play different positions. Yeah. Coco's very eloquent. Flawless is the mouthpiece. I'm the, okay, I'm going to stay back behind. And then we can all trade off and we can all be the different piece as when we need to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that's what scares them. It's because yeah. they can't figure us out. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. like, bitch, you was just in here loud and now you're soft. And, mm -hmm. But that's how we have to break through because we have to talk, speak to them on a level that they understand, right? Like, mm -hmm. and I think that it's starting to work. If we look, if we turn around right now and we look at the last six months of the ISRC, girl, we have the night of Portland. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a conversation with Monica, the president tonight, and um, on the 7th, they're, have a di they're having a diversity training. Um, they've paid for a trans inclusion training with, for up to 150 people. Like, these are things that are coming, and I asked for, we asked for, everyone asked for. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so for our listeners, ISRC is the Imperial Sovereign Rose Court. Mm -hmm. They're the court system here in Portland. They also hold the Gate Oregon title. They have um, a bunch of other titles that they have in there. They have Emperor and Empress. Um, you know, they have a full Light board. Portland, debutante. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of titles that people have to run for and they raise money for and things like that. So these are some huge titles. Um, I know in other states, um, their court systems don't usually have those titles. Like usually it's a separate organization that runs those pageants. But so this organization has these, like, you know, obviously statewide titles. Um, mm -hmm. 
and they've had some problematic behaviors over the last few months. And so what me and Kimber and Donatella are talking about right now is some of the reforms that are happening that we've pushed in meetings that we've attended um, virtually, you know, trying to have these dialogues with these people about, you know, making changes. And I've seen some success. I've seen some pushback. I've seen some mm-hmm. hurt feelings. I've seen mm-hmm. some slander and I've seen some praise mm-hmm. across the board. And Kimber has done a great job because I've listened in on the meetings and sometimes I don't even talk. Like I actually was at the last meeting, uh, not the one recently, but the one before last. And yeah, I just listened pretty much the entire time. And I remember Kimber came on and just asked some really hard, direct questions that she expected answers on. And I was like, Girl, I hit them with the mission and the vision statement. And you know why I did that, Coco? Mm -hmm. It's because of you. You, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. You have this eloquent way of speaking. and, And I noticed that at that first meeting, that changed my whole world. When I saw that they listened to the way that you spoke, because remember, we were both at the same meeting and I came in hot and fuck that, (laughs) stand up, how many black people? And and then I watched and I saw that they listened to you. And did you see my energy at the second meeting? Yeah. Very different. My statement was, if you don't change it, I'm not coming back. Right. And I super agree with that. Right. And so what do I want to see on a local level? I want to see us black people learn from each other as well yeah please let's unify no we are not we are all different and we are all beautiful in our own right like Mm -hmm. i've been able to open up to a lot of um my black family here in portland oregon over the last week and i've been able to share some things with them that they don't even understand they didn't even know about me one of the big things excuse me one of the big things here is that i've been called whitewashed several times by the black folk here Mm -hmm. And if you heard my backstory and who my family is and what we've done to hear anybody say that to me is like, it's nuts. And it was a long time that I let it go because I wanted to be accepted by those black people. No more. No more. Have you heard? New Black City is taking over. I don't know if you've heard of these girls. Coco, Flawless. Rogue Safari, Kimber Shade, Courtney Capri Dove. We're these girls that we're speaking loud and changes are happening. If you're, I'm going to say it again. If you're resting on your laurels, you're the problem. Mm-hmm. I won't say names this time because you already know. I'm feeling all fired up. I'm like, let's go hit the street. Scoot this podcast. I love like, that. No, I'm just sitting here in a room by myself and I'm like, yeah, I am mad about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crazy like- because even when I get mad and I want to say names and I want to speak my mind, I still have to hold back because this is the city that we live in and those people have power moves and they can make power plays and they can shut me off. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of it. Yeah, I agree with that. So, so I want to know what are the obligations? What do you feel are the obligations of queer entertainers during a time like this, um, you know, to the community? What are their obligations to the community right now um, with everything that's going on? Stand up, act up, fight back. If you're doing anything else, you're taking up space. Being Dang. a drag queen, being a drag queen is not about looking pretty and and having the best fashions. Being a drag queen is about making a statement and and taking up for the underdog. Definitely. So if you're not doing that and all you're doing is TikTok videos, you're the problem. Yeah. yeah. You're the problem. Social media right now is hot and we can take advantage of this and we can change the world. And if you're too busy about your lip gloss, even though I have lip gloss on right now, <laughs> if you're too busy about your lip gloss and looking cute on a lip sync, you're the problem. So step aside, sis, and let the, let the new girls take over. Agreed. I, I agree with that. Like, I want to beat my mug and go march in these streets. Like, yeah. you know, the <laughs> right? So, so empowered. Um, it's very, I don't know, you just have a really great energy that helps ener- energize people during a time like this. Yeah, I do feel so. very energized by your words. And I have been feeling energized what you said online. Yeah. What I've heard ditto, you say sis, in these ditto, ditto. And like, even watching your live. Um, Kimber had some great live, um, you know, showing the peaceful protests and whatever. Yeah. And I say peaceful protest not in the sense that i think that rioting is necessarily horrible it's just the protest was peaceful like so i'm we just gonna say like along. it is yeah it, I, you know and i also agree i also mm-hmm. agree you know I, and i made that very clear in my in my lives if you're caring more about the buildings than lives then you're the problem um Ch- but also true. it's really important watch what the media is showing you they're only showing you the flashbangs and the fireworks yeah. What about right. the people? What about the thousands of people that are laying down on a bridge mm-hmm. in solidarity? Mm-hmm. Right. 
Agree. Honestly, there's a lot of videos just on social media platforms alone that are contradicting everything that the mainstream media is putting out there. So I have a background in journalism, and this is one of the only time. well, this is a new time in history where this is actually happening, where what we trust as journalism is actually getting trumped by the people. Yeah. 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 Agreed. So, um... You know, don't, can you edit that out? Don't let me say trumped. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can edit it out. Beep it let out. Me... Beep it out. <laughs> yes, we will beep it out. We will beep it out. So, since we're like now we're at our time what is just like okay. some quick phrase or whatever or something that you would like to say you know just a closing out for your friends fans followers and our listeners about kimber shade really quick pressure makes diamonds when they don't let you through the door build your own and you'll be fine dang yes so go ahead and tell all the fans your um social medias to where they can find you and follow you yeah Oh my God, girl, I just became a licensed makeup artist and esthetician. You can find me at Made Up by Henry um, on Instagram, <laughs> Henry Felton on Facebook, and if you nasty, um, House of Plastic on Twitter. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being our guest uh, on this episode, Kimber. We really did really enjoy it. Let me just say this. Thank you so much for having a platform that speaks. You guys are doing the work. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's really kind. It's important during this time that we use it to talk about the important things. And, Mm -hmm. you know, having Mm -hmm. you on here is definitely Mm -hmm. what we needed for this Mm -hmm. week. And Coco, I see you. My my drag family versus yours. Whenever you're ready, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) I've been doing, bitch. I'm ready. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on today. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um, So... Uh, since this is going to be the end of our video, so uh, Donna, where can they find us? You can find us at a gem of a secret podcast.com. That's a gem of a secret podcast.com for exclusive content. Yeah, so I'm Coco Gem Holiday. And I'm Donatella My Secrets. Thanks, everybody. This has been another episode of a gem of a secret podcast. The hosts of a gem of a secret podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Gem Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at The Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a J E M of a secret podcast.com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>